The Euro area economy is looking terrible and this goes for Italy, for Spain and even Germany. Industrial production has fallen and so much more. Let's get into the details today. Europe is falling apart. If the plan was to have the euro succeed, this was a massive failure. Just look at the economies of this group. It's just getting worse every single year. Banks are failing. Money is fleeing. The ECB literally has to print up money and buy practically everything just to slow down the inevitable failure. What will come of this? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to have our our focus on Europe. I'm going to show you what has happened and it doesn't look good. No matter which country you choose, the situation goes from bad to worse. So let's begin by taking a look at this. For all the palpitations that the trade issues between the US and China will knock out their economies, it is Europe that is increasingly looking like it's the biggest threat to global growth. Deteriorating demand is evident across the 19 nation euro as it finds itself squeezed between international and domestic drags. They're talking about some of the issues that have been going on recently and obviously we have Brexit being an issue, we have US and European tensions being an issue. There's a lot happening right now. That leaves its expansion at risk of barely topping 1% this year, a sharp slowdown from 2018, even with the continental powerhouse Germany in trouble. And I'm going to show you some charts on Germany in just a minute. Investors are tuning in. The euro index is near its lowest since mid-2017. Euro stocks have never been cheaper relative to bonds in terms of the yield gap. So take a look at that information if you're interested. I just wanted to focus on a few fundamental aspects today. The concern I have right now is in Europe. It's clear that China is going through a slowdown, but there's also a strong amount of stimulus in the pipeline. However, in Europe, things are deteriorating quite fast. And this is coming at a time when we have seen the ECB buying up everything, including corporate debt. The CSPP program literally buys the debt of companies all across the Euro area. We're talking about all of these big companies, the huge companies, and these are making money hand over fist and yet they are in a different way weakening and they're getting money from the ECB. This is of course a scam to funnel money from the people to the globalist elite but we're not allowed to talk about it. Some people get offended. Part of the problem began during the financial crisis, which hit the US really hard, but also did affect Europe. And then it got worse as of 2011, moving into 2012, we saw the Euro viral contagion that took place. And I do believe that this sovereign debt crisis has never been resolved. The issues that were present then are of course even more prominent today and we're finding that out. You're seeing bank failures, you're seeing bailouts, you're seeing everything apparently after all of this has been resolved, but really it hasn't. It's very clear to me and I know it's clear to you as well. Eurozone industrial production has fallen into the red. We are seeing it month after month now. The same situation occurred for an extended period of time during that sovereign debt crisis and then it picked up again once the ECB decided to print money, once the global economy started to strengthen slightly because of all that quantitative easing, because of the stimulus packages that were basically present in every country, whether that was the US, whether it was China and so many others that were really making it known how far they're willing to go. German GDP quarter over quarter. I want to say congratulations. Germany, you did an incredible job at making it look as if you didn't fall into a recession. I just want to thank everyone who was taking part in this fantastic production. Very nice. It's probably hard to see on your screen there. But if you look right here, there's this little tiny blip which put it just outside of negative territory. And that means that it didn't fall into a recession. So even if next month, if it goes down into the negative, it's not two consecutive quarters, therefore they're okay. Excellent work, Germany, congratulations. So here you're seeing the German GDP, you're looking at the retail sales, the PMI, you're looking at all these factors here becoming a problem for Germany. And this is supposedly the strongest country in the Eurozone and doesn't look like they're doing so well right now. This is coming at a time when we are seeing problems all 
across the world all throughout 2018. It has nothing to do with what they point fingers at. We are seeing underlying fundamental risks that are being exposed today. Europe industrial production, you can see how they've moved into the negative. You're seeing Dutch, France, Italy, and German industrial production. All of these are not doing well right now. The big slump, the euro area and its biggest economies are set to lose momentum this year. And they, of course, expect it to rise in 2020, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. This chart happens to be from Bloomberg, but the data comes from the European Commission. They're always, always, every time they will, of course, try to make it seem better than where it's actually going to be. And they never revise it properly. And they, of course, never admit that they were wrong. What you're looking at is Germany. Germany, France, and Italy. Obviously, Germany is going to probably do better than a country like Italy, but it just shows you that all of them are looking weak compared to where they forecasted that they would be. The euro area annual GDP looks like for 2019, I would say based on that, about 1.35%. That looks very weak considering that We've had all this stimulus, we'd have everything that's been happening throughout the last few years and still, still they cannot stop the deflation from occurring. Bad news, Euro area economic numbers have consistently missed the forecasts. I just wanted to show you that. I think it's important to see what these financial institutions, the rating agencies, the analysts, and everybody top to bottom makes these claims and then they never come true. And then even after being wrong time and time again, the news agencies, the reporting goes back to the same people, the same institutions and asks what they think it's going to be like, and it's sheer madness. Okay, my friends in the UK, Brexit, I want to talk about it for a minute. Where a no deal Brexit would hit hardest, estimated number of jobs threatened per country in the case of a hard Brexit. So Germany, apparently 103,000. That's a lot of jobs that are potentially going to be lost according to what they say. I'm not necessarily suggesting that at all. China is on here as well at 59,000. Now, of course, when they first started mentioning the Brexit, I was doing videos about it. I obviously saw that this was important. From day one, I was suggesting it doesn't even look like a Brexit is going to happen. And then there were some people that suggested that I was wrong for saying that and that look, Article 50 finally got put in. It's going to happen. Let's celebrate. Here we are month after month and there's still no deal in place. They haven't figured it out. Imagine once they finally get it to happen, think about how many years it's going to take to actually completely let go of the shackles that the EU has put on the UK. It's not going to end overnight. It's not as if you sign a piece of paper and that's it. It's going to take years to get off of it. So here we are years after they started initially discussing this and there has been, as far as I'm concerned, no progress. We're probably worse off than we were a couple of years ago. But initially when this was being brought into the news, when that word Brexit wasn't even there yet, the suggestion of leaving the EU was unheard of. Even just leaving, this is impossible. They're leaving Europe. That's what they say, they're leaving Europe as if they're just gonna float away into North America or something. They're leaving Europe and this is going to cause mass amounts of jobs that are gonna be lost. They're not gonna be able to trade anymore. Their economy is just going to sink to the absolute bottom. Every piece of news was negative on it. Now they're talking about the fact that if they don't put all of this into law and get it signed, that somehow this is going to cause the jobs to be lost. Look, everything that they do is only manipulating you into believing that it's going to be worse. Just stay where you are. Just stay in the EU. You're going to do fine. Everything was fine before. So stay in the EU. Make sure that you vote that way and make sure you put the people into power that make you want to believe that the EU is the solution to the problem. But of course, it couldn't be further from 
telling the truth. We've got big problems going on today, and I'm seeing that in every country, but that's besides the point. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about historically what happened here. I outlined it as it occurred. I've been documenting that if you've been watching the channel. And then last but not least, I want to talk about Spain for a second, specifically Santander. Santander's decision not to, quote, call or repay one of its bonds has confounded investors. Everyone expects the 1.5 billion cocoa bond would be repaid under a gentleman's agreement. Santander's decision not to makes the rest of the $141 billion market look a lot more risky. So apparently you don't have to pay back your bonds. Look at what happened with Venezuela. Look at Argentina. Look at all these countries that simply default whenever they don't pay back. And in this case, it works a little differently. It's not exactly the same, but I just wanted to show you the fact that there have been many cases where companies, countries, they don't pay back. The fact that a strong global bank has brought such attention to the debt class does not bode well for the multitude of small and weaker institutions that are either already in the market or are thinking of entering the higher risk junior subordinated market. They mentioned the fact that this part of the bond market looks a lot more risky than initially thought, and that's obvious to me, of course. Just look at what happened with these new recent auto loan delinquencies. I brought it up, an individual said, look, look at the delinquencies, they're so small, that's not a risk. But of course, look at what happened, for example, with the California wildfires. It only started with a spark, and that spread further and further. Further, take the subprime market when you saw in 2007 started in one sector all of a sudden it spread out and look at what happened to the housing market to the economy to the financial system it spread further and further and further why was real estate in completely different countries affected by the subprime market of the United States that doesn't make any sense and what about the financial companies in Europe hurt at the same time the subprime market in the United States was taking a beating. Everything is interconnected and nobody seems to realize that. Those who aren't paying attention don't seem to realize that and they're going to get blindsided. Really unfortunate. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting the channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. All you need to do is click the link in the description. It'll take you over. You can flip through the pages of the book for yourself if you want to do that. And if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com.